SciFinder Scholar is a database for chemistry and other disciplines that allows students to search for references, substances, and reactions. It contains a large article database as well as information about various compounds and reactions. Here on the left you can see the three different ways to search SciFinder Scholar. References, substances, and reactions. The references search is a simple article search of everything that's in CAS's entire database of chemical resources. So if I search for something like photocyanation of aromatic compounds, instead of a list of results, the first thing I receive is a breakdown of different ways I can search these terms. It's parsing my keywords for me. So it finds two references containing the full string photocyanation of aromatic compounds, but some other ways that the two keywords are broken up. In this case, I'm going to choose the 26 references that were found finding both concepts anywhere in the reference. And I'm going to click Get References. That takes me to a list of 26 different articles that have been written on this topic. For each article, I have the ability to click Full Text to see whether the library has full text. I'll be taken to a screen that tells me whether Campbell Library owns the article, or whether it needs to be ordered via interlibrary loan. Because this is a list of abstracts, many articles here will need to be ordered through interlibrary loan. As with many databases, I can refine my search over here on the left by research topic or author or many other things. One of the cool features of SciFinder is that it also lets me analyze my results, again over here on the left. This is broken down by author name, but if I want to, I can choose Supplementary Terms, which is a list of additional subjects or topics that may appear within my results. You can see that gives me several different subtopics, including photo substitution. So if I'm interested in results related to photo substitution, I can just click there. And then I'm shown the 11 of my 26 results that contain photo substitution. So that's how articles work in SciFinder. Again, the reason you'd use this is because you want a comprehensive list of articles in the field of chemistry related to a given topic. Back at my main screen, I want to show you a few things about my Substances tab. I have the ability to search by chemical structure. Clicking on chemical structure will let me open a cool editor where I can draw molecules and search for information about them, including articles, safety information, and other basic information from chemistry reference resources. But for many of you, including myself, it's going to be easier to search by molecular formula. This lets me type in a molecular formula like H2SO4, sulfuric acid. I don't need any superscripts or subscripts, and I can click search. This gives me several detailed listings of information about sulfuric acid but it also lets me get articles involving sulfuric acid. By clicking Get References, I can get articles related to sulfuric acid. When I click Get References, I get this pop-up. And you can see it lets me limit my results to articles related to certain things about sulfuric acid. In this case, I'm interested in the preparation of sulfuric acid, a very common industrial compound. If I click the checkbox next to Preparation, and then click Get, you can see that I have 14,423 references related to the preparation of sulfuric acid. But you can find more obscure compounds, too. You'll find fewer references, but you'll still find good information. So one of the things that's very exciting about SciFinder Scholar is that it allows me to move between substances, articles, and reactions in that seamless way. Those are just a few tips for using SciFinder effectively. To get more help, visit any of the locations here, Call us or email us, or check out our additional tutorials elsewhere on the website. Happy searching!